great. Now for this first tutorial, we're just gonna be setting up our user interface. If you're already pretty proficient with user interfaces in Unity and you have a setup you like for your own dialog, that's gonna be just fine. However, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a couple of key features. One is a panel with some Text Mesh Pro where you can put the player's name. You'll of course need a place for your dialog to display and also an image which we can trade out with different sprites in order to show the character's portrait. Finally, you'll need to make a panel that has buttons on it that you can use for selecting options when dialog branches come up. All right, let's dig in here. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is to create a UI canvas. I'm just gonna call this one dialog canvas. And first thing we should always do when creating a new canvas is head over to our scaler where I'm gonna change from constant pixel to scale with screen size. I'm working in full HD right now. And if you're not sure what you're in, you can just click on game and check at the top here. And when you wanna use those numbers as your reference resolution. So 1020, 1920 by 1080 for me. All right, with that done, we're gonna add our first panel and this one will actually be our name panel. I'm just gonna double click the canvas to zoom out so we can see what this is looking like. And for that name panel, we're gonna to wanna to of course make this significantly smaller. The numbers I'll be using are 50 and 50. And then on the sides we'll go 1050 by 950. You can of course customize this however you want, but that's a size that I like. Let's turn my gizmos on so we can see our screen here too. At this point, I'm just gonna click on my image. I'm gonna be using white. I like a nice light theme. I'm gonna set this one to a about 80 on our transparency. With that done, we can actually add the text itself. So let's go UI Text Mesh Pro. I'm gonna call this one Actor Text. And throughout this tutorial, we'll be referring to the person who's speaking as the actor. First thing we wanna do is click up here in our anchor presets, and we're just gonna stretch this to fill. Next, I'm just gonna make a slight margin on the right side. You'll notice that just moved things in a little, and that's just because I'm gonna actually be aligning to the right later on with my text, and I don't want it going all the way to the edge of the box. At this point, you can just kind of make this look however you want it to. And as I said before, I'll be right aligning. First panel done, we can now add our next panel. This one is going to be the actual dialogue panel where we show our text. And to get this one fitting about right, I'm gonna be using 50 by 140. And then on the right, we'll go 50 and 650. I'll also set my alpha to 80 again. There's gonna be two things that we wanna put on this dialogue panel. First of all, if I right click, go to UI, we're gonna add an image. This will be for our portrait. This time around, I'm actually going to be anchoring this one up into the top left and I'll hold Option or Alt on PC in order to anchor it there as well. And then I'm just gonna change some numbers here. Let's go 200, minus 90, 400 and 400. That'll have it taking up that space nicely. Now, if you wanna know what that looks like, you can drag your own sprite into the sprite box and get a bit of a feel. Now at this point, I might just want to adjust that one a tiny bit to bring it down. There we go. Right next, I'm gonna right click on our dialog panel and we're gonna add our UI Text Mesh Pro and this is going to be for the dialog text itself. Again, I am going to want to fit it this time. So I'm gonna stretch down here in the bottom right corner, hold Option or Alt in order to have it fill the space. Now, obviously we don't want our text going back behind our portrait though. And so we are gonna add some margins. On the left, I'm gonna use 420 as my number. And then around each of the other sides, I'm just gonna do a padding of 20 to keep us from touching the very edges. With that done, we can once again, just make this look the way we want it to. All right, with that done, we're ready to start our final panel. So right click on the UI canvas, go to UI, and we're gonna add one more panel. This one is going to be our options panel. This will be where we display our buttons with options whenever a text branch comes up. And for numbers this time, I'm just gonna go with 50 by 450. And then we'll also go 50 by 400. Now that options panel is significantly larger than we actually want it to be. We don't want big, giant, chunky buttons like that. However, this is actually just going to be a space that houses the button. And I wanna make sure that our buttons can expand to fit whatever text we wanna put in them. And so we need a large space for that, but we don't need to see it. So let's set our alpha to zero. Now this panel is gonna be controlling our different buttons. And to do that, we're gonna add a horizontal layout group. And it's just gonna actually, I'm gonna to align to the upper right as I want my buttons to display themselves from the right and work their way across to the left. One other thing we're gonna do here is add a content size fitter. 
All right, with that done, we're ready to create our actual button. So I can click here, go to UI, Text Mesh Pro button. I'm actually gonna call this one option zero. The reason I'm starting at zero is because in all of our arrays will also be starting with zero. And so later on, the code will just make more sense and line up better with the buttons if we use that. All right now, clicking on this and heading right up to the top here, I'm gonna keep these aligned to top left. That looks good. And for now, let's set our button size to 450 by 80, which is a not bad size. And then for color, I'm gonna go with an alpha of 80 so that it matches the rest of our panel. Actually, let's head down and look at our Text Mesh Pro. And I'll just call this option text. And then we can set it up the way we want it to look. Right, with that done, we can now duplicate our buttons. I'm just gonna rename them to be option one, two, and three. And we can also set our text to match as well. All right, now with that done, we've got a nice looking dialogue panel set up. If I take a look in my game view, we can get a bit of a feel for what that's gonna look like. And we're gonna be ready to get started coding. I will see you in the next tutorial.